Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I thought I would reverse dye and then gravity dye a hoodie. I'm using one of the Buffalo brand hoodies, which are a women's hoodie which I purchased at Costco. They're 70% viscose, 16% cotton, 11% polyester, and 3% elastane. But they're 100% soft. If you haven't tried them yet, they're a really soft, nice hoodie to wear. I'm going to do a side fan fold, so I've made a mark on the side of the hoodie using a piece of white chalk, and then attached a piece of string to the chalk to draw myself an arc on the side of the hoodie. I'm now fan folding that line, and when I'm finished fan folding, I'm going to tie it with some sinew. Sinew is wax coated, so the wax coating is not going to allow the color remover or the dye underneath that area. So every place where I put a sinew line and I tighten it down really well, that area is going to remain black. So those black lines are going to give me some definition in the hoodie. I'm going to add a few more sinew lines on either side of this initial line, but I'm not going to tie up the whole entire hoodie with sinew. I want to do a little bit of gravity dyeing on this one. So I want to partially tie it with sinew and have a fan fold. And then I also want to allow part of it to be free so that I can gravity dye it. I noticed that my sinew had buckled just a little bit, so I untied it and went ahead and retied it to make sure my folds were flat and the sinew was tight. For the color removal process, I'm going to use a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. And I normally get mine on the laundry aisle at Walmart. It's usually by the bleach, even though it's not a bleach product. So it's not going to damage your fabric the way bleach will, and it doesn't need any kind of neutralizing the way bleach does. I'm going to do quite a few hoodies all at the same time. So I've placed them down inside of a plastic tub or tote and I'm going to liberally sprinkle the Out White Bright over the top. I'm also doing this process outside because the Out White Bright does have a smell and so I don't like to use it inside. I'm wearing my respirator for the entire process as well because I don't want to inhale any of the powder or the fumes. Now I'm going to add some boiling hot water over the top and the minute that I do the Out White Bright starts to bubble and remove the color. It's a little difficult to tell because the polyester portion of the hoodies is what is on the outside right now since I have them turned inside out. I didn't even think about that and so I ended up thinking that the Out White Bright needed a little bit more help and added some more. But if you notice there's one hoodie which is the one that I'm doing right now which is partially untied and you can see some of that orangey color where the color is being removed. Because the hoodies are not totally submerged, I went ahead and added a second pot of boiling hot water over the top. Then I allowed the hoodies to just sit in the out white bright solution for about 20 to 30 minutes. Then I took them to my utility sink and I rinsed them in cold water. I left everything tied and put it into the washing machine along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent. And you can wash it with either a warm or a hot cycle. That part doesn't really matter. 
Then I still left them tied and put them into my soda ash solution, soaked them for 20 to 30 minutes, and then wrung them out of my panda spin dryer. After I wrung the hoodies out, I went ahead and put them aside to let them dry out for a couple of days. I prefer to dye anything that is this thick or is a really thick fold when it's totally dry because I feel like I get better color saturation in the middle of the fold. To gravity dye the hoodie, I've taken it outside and I have a metal drying rack where I've placed one of the plastic dish pans from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store on top of the drying rack. Then I've added the fan fold portion to the inside of that dish pan. I'm going to apply the colors to the various sections. I wanted to use some citrusy type colors, so at the very end I used Island Breeze from Pro Chemical and Dye, followed by Key Lime from Dye Spin, Grecian Sea from Dharma, Lime Pop from Dharma, then I put another line of Island Breeze, and I finished with Lime Squeeze from Dharma. Now I'm going to put some additional soda ash over the top of the die and add on the ice. My intention is that this part of the hoodie is going to be muck dyed and then the die is going to run or be wicked up through the hoodie and dye the remaining portion that's hanging over the edge. By the way, I put a container down below to catch any of the runoff dye. I've added some process photos so you can kind of see how it went. And it was going along really well. When it started to get dark, I went ahead and laid like a container lid over the top of this dish pan just to make sure nothing disturbed the hoodie during the night. When I woke up the next morning, the lid was off of the dish pan and the hoodie was kind of at an angle. The whole entire dish pan on top was tilted and all of the muck had gone into the container below. So I think what probably happened is the hoodie just got too heavy and tipped that dish pan over, causing all the muck to pour out into the pan below. So at this point, nothing else was going to happen with it. I mean, it can't pull liquid that isn't there down through it. So I just went ahead so that the hoodie didn't dry out and put it inside of a container to allow it to process. After about 24 hours, I took it to my utility sink and I rinsed it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied it and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to try to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. After rinsing for a while, I ran some really hot water in one of these plastic dish pans, added some Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and just allowed the hoodie to soak. I changed out the water as it would cool off and continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the hoodie along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the hoodie was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So my experiment did not work. I needed to put the hoodie in the container on a flat surface, but all my flat surfaces that I use for gravity dye were already in use the day that I did this hoodie. I think that it would have worked well though if I could have put it on a flat surface. I'm not super excited about the way the colors did either, but here again, I can't totally judge that because they didn't really have long enough to sit on the fabric to go ahead and soak in properly and get as dark and vibrant as they were supposed to get. So, I can't totally judge this one fairly. I mean, really the only blue that's showing up, the island breeze is pretty much non-existent. You can see a little bit of the Grecian Sea. But in all fairness, I don't think it was very long after all the ice melted before the container tipped over 
and all the muck ran out. So I'm actually quite surprised that there's as much color on the hoodie as there is. I didn't think that there would be this much. So I did learn something through the experiment, which is kind of the reason why I show the ones that don't always work out, because you do learn something from every shirt you do, whether it's a good one or a bad one. I mean, there's a lesson to be learned. The reverse dye process worked great. These hoodies do great with the reverse dye process, and I really do think that this one would have looked much prettier if it would have been allowed to sit the proper amount of time and process properly. So if you've enjoyed watching my wacky experiment, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video. And if you're enjoying the content and the experiments that I do on this YouTube channel, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.